we can derive it. So I'm going to attempt to derive voltage division. Let's say we have this circuit. Voltage division applies when you have elements connected in series. So we have a voltage source is voltage division. So let's look first at voltage division. Voltage, that means the voltage is going to be, we have a voltage source, we'll call it Vs. And let's say we have, we'll do color resistors here. We'll call that R sub 1 and this one R sub 2. And my goal is actually to find out what is the voltage cross each one. What is this voltage? How is this Vs going to break down? It's going to be a portion is going to go right there and a portion will go across this one. So if this is 5 volts, I might have 2 volts here and 3 volts here. Or I might have 4 volts here and 1 volt here based on the values of R. Let's derive the equation for that. Now, if we have only one source, minus to plus like this, that tells me it's going to be a current going this way, I. And if I use KVL, there's only one loop here, one closed loop. If I use KVL, it says sum of the voltage in a closed loop is zero. The algebraic sum of all the voltages is equal to zero. That's KVL. So let's do a KVL. It's going to mark this minus to plus. That's a minus Vs plus V1 plus V2 is equal to zero. That means V1 plus V2 equals what? Vs. Now, you, normally we know what Vs is. So Vs, we know what that is. But we don't know what V1 or V2. So you're going to have two unknowns. V1, V2. Is there a way to write V1 and V2 in terms of I? V equals IR. Yep, V equals IR, good. That means V1 is going to equal I, which is unknown to us. And what's the resistor? R sub 1. And V2 is going to equal to what? I times R sub 2. So if I do the substitution here, in place of V1, let's put I times R sub 1. In place of V2, I times R sub 2 equals Vs. Factor an I out. R1 plus R2 equals Vs. And what do you know? We know what I equal to. It's going to be what? Vs over R1 plus R sub 2. That's the current through it. I'm almost there. Let me redraw that circuit again quickly. Vs, because I'm going to go on the next page. You don't have to draw yours. And we just finished saying I equals Vs times R sub 1 plus R sub 2. And I is this current. Now, can we find what V1, V2? What is V1? Ohm's law says V1 equals what? I times R sub 1. Well, we know what I. It's Vs over R sub 1 plus R sub 2 times R sub 1. And that will give me what? Vs times, if I rewrite that, R sub 1 over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. That's V1. 
V2, I times R sub 2, Vs over R1 plus R sub 2, times R sub 2, which equals Vs times R sub 2 over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. The one thing I want you to notice that if you are looking, notice the bottom first. The bottom is always the same, R1, R sub 2 for both. Vs is the same. The only thing difference is what? The top. If you are looking for V1, this number is 1, look what's on the top, R sub 1. If you're looking for V2, notice what's on the top here, R sub 2. So these are always matching with voltage division. So an example, let's take an example. Let's say we have 10 volts here, that's my source. I have R sub 1, uh, let's give it a value, equals 10 ohms, and I have R sub 2, which equals 90 ohms. I want to find out the voltage cross R sub 1, we'll call that V1, and the voltage drop cross R sub 2, we'll call that V sub 2. When I'm done with both of these, once I find them, I'm positive. If I add the two answers, they should add up to what? 10 volts. Ten volts. Sum of the voltage in the closed loop is zero. V1, according to Ohm's law, says take your source, multiply it by R sub 1, because they have to match, over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. So my source here is 10. And what's R sub 1? 10 over what? 100. And that gives me what? 1 volt. V2 is equal to Vs times R sub 2 over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. 10 times R sub 2, which is what? 90 over 100, and what do we have? 9 volts. If I add 1 and 9, it should give me what? 10. What happens if you have three resistors, not just two? Would you make it, would it be Vs times R over R1 plus R2 plus R3? Possibly. So if you have, let's see, um, let me make a circuit here. Let's say we have here 20 volts. Thirty ohms. Twenty ohms and 50 ohms. And I want to find the voltage cross each one. Let's call this V1, call this voltage drop V2, call this one V3. Notice the direction I made them. Why? Because I know my current is going to travel through the source which way? This way. Through the source, it's going to be minus to plus. It's going to supply the power. So it's going to mark this plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. And uh, the 20 volts is absorbing the power? Supplying. This one better supply. That's the only that source you have. And the other ones are absorbing. Yep. Notice when the current enters, the tip of the current enters the minus, 
That's absorbing. Uh, supplying. That's supplying. Yeah. Supplying. That's a negative power. Oh, okay. When it enters the plus, plus that's absorbed. absorbing. Yep. Okay. I'm just I'm trying to yep. differentiate. That. Well, just think about it. This is positive and this is negative, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna multiply positive times negative, which is what? Negative. Negative. Negative is always supply. This is positive times positive. Think of it. Positive. That's positive. That's taken. That might be a way to remember it. That's a, yeah, it's actually really helpful. Thank you. Yep. So let's find what V1 is. It's going to be the source, which is 20 times that resistor. If you're looking for the voltage, you have to use that resistor. So that's what? 30 over the sum of all three of them. 30 plus 20 plus 50, which is what? 100. Is that 6 volts? What's V2? 20 times what? 20 over 100. That's 4 volts. And V3 equals 20 times what? 50 over 100, which is what? 10 volts. Yep. Now you're saying just, you know, just because you said it's going to be true, how do we know you're really telling the truth? How do we know this is accurate? Well, we can prove that the other way because how are these resistors connected? In series. So we can actually combine them together into one resistor, right? And what's the value of that? A hundred. Can we figure out what the current is now? What I is? I is going to be what? V divided by R. What's that? 0 0.2 amps, right? Mm -hmm. Go, well, this is equivalent to that. That means V1, Ohm's law V equals what? I times R. 0 0.2 amps times what? What's R? 30. 30. What do we have? 6 volts. Is that the same answer as this? Mm -hmm. uh, V2. I times R, 0.2 amp times 20, that's a 4 volts, that matches 2. V3 equals I times R, 0.2 amps times 50, and that's 10 volts. So that's another way to prove that this equation is really correct, voltage division does work. We use that a lot, voltage division, so a quicker way to get to the answer.